All right, everybody. Appreciate you guys making it a late night for us here out on the West Coast. We'll get things started here with an opening statement from Coach Lewis after tonight's game against Washington. Coach? Hey, good evening, everyone. You know, probably the way that our kids fought the very end. It's a heck of a goal line stand by our guys late. You know, they got a ton of grit. They got a ton of resolve. We're going to learn a lot about ourselves here through the month of September and the character of this football team. I think we learned a lot. Obviously, our execution has to be better in the front, and that starts with me, when our kids in the best spots to be successful. You know, can't come out after all the time that we've had to prep here in the very first play of the game. We throw an interception. That's 100% on me. That's not on anyone else. So that way we can start fast and we can finish strong all the way through. Our kids fought. They were resilient. We saw some great moments where I know that we're going to be able to build off of it as we go forward. There's going to be some lessons learned as we go here and excited to work and roll up our sleeves and continue to do what we need to do to come together and make this thing a very, very special trip as we head to Oklahoma here tomorrow and roll into week two. All right, let's open it up for some questioning. Let's start with our man, Alan Maul from the Record Courier. Alan, if you can unmute yourself and ask your questions for coach. Yeah, obviously you knew you were in for a challenge with uh, Penix at quarterback. Um, just kind of talk about what you were trying to do with him and what he was able to do to you guys today. Yeah, I, I mean, we were obviously trying to change the pictures up on him. He did a great job reading out of it. We knew that he's seen a lot of ball, a lot of pictures, and obviously very comfortable in this system. And um, they were able to create some matchups, create some space, and able to play catch early in the game. You know, so we came out in the second half, tried to change those pictures again. They did a great job adjusting. Kid, you know, has played a lot of ball. And him and Coach DeBoer, they, they operate well together. They're a talented ball club. And, and you know, they, they were, did a great job of keeping him upright. We weren't able to apply a whole ton of pressure to move him off his spots. So he was able to play pitch and catch. So, again, those are things that we'll work on, you know, things that we can refine and things that will put our kids in a better position to be successful as a staff as we continue to go forward. Um, you know, just talk about Coach Johnson making his debut and, uh, you know, how things went with that, um, you know, just as far as communications and those types of things and, and that. Yeah, communication was good. Energy was up throughout. The kids fought to the very end, so they believe. And I think that goal line stand shows a lot about their buy and, and trust and, and what Coach Johnson and our staff is doing. And, again, those will be things that we'll build upon and, and continue to strengthen the resolve and the character of that side of the ball. And our soul collectors, it'll, it'll be fun to watch them to come together. Um, talk about uh, – you mentioned the first play with Colin. Um, you know, he, he was able to bounce back and make several plays. Just kind of talk about what you thought about his uh, debut as a co collegiate starter. Yeah, I mean, th that first play is on me. That's not on him, and I wish I could, uh, you know, take that off of his ledger, but unfortunately he'll carry that with him. But that's 100% on me. Hey, he did a great job throughout everything, you know, staying calm, leading. Um, I, I really thought he did a nice job being able to change his arm angles, throw from different platforms, you know, and, and when he was under some duress, it didn't bother him. Um, he stayed the course, let some, you know, big play drives. You know, we had a couple of drives that were 10 play drives. Obviously, the explosive plays are still there, um, you know, and, and so – Again, I think his future is really bright, and I feel very comfortable with the ball in his hand. I know he's going to do some dynamic things for us the way that he did tonight, and we're going to be just fine. Um, you know, just talk about this test in general. I mean, a lot of people saw this Washington team as, you know, a 4-8 and eight team last year. Um, I've done a just talk about this test coming out of the gate for you guys with all this newness that you're just talking about, you know, new defensive coordinator, Colin Nick in his debut. How tough was it out there? I don't know relatively, you know, we ever look at the level of toughness to it, you know, that those are things that we can't control and the situation is what it is. So like we talked about at, at media day, you know, we look to stay level headed with it all and the things that we can control, we'll control. And, and I, I love, I guess the adversity and the real contact that was made tonight, right? Like to where we get to find out who we are. It's one thing when you're going against each other and you see those pictures over and over and over again and camp to see where we're at. Well, now we get to go play against someone in, in different color jerseys, right? And so now we know where we're at. We'll be able to look at the tape, truly adjust it. Um, but I welcome the challenges that are with this. It's why we do it. It's why we got coach in front of our name. It's why the kids love to play. It's why we get to do what we do together. And so, you know, the the heat and the pressure, whatever it is that you want to call it, that we're going to see as we continue to work through the month of September on this trip, it's only going to strengthen us. It's only going to bring us closer together. And I'm excited for that process and day in and day out, you know, for us to make the investments that are needed to become a championship ball club. One more, Coach. Just talk about your offensive line. You got a bunch of new guys up there. Um, you know, they you're able to run the ball a little bit, but just talk about how, you know, how those guys did, how they held up. Yeah, I mean, I thought they're coming together, right? I mean, again, they're, they're, they're playing together for the first time. So seeing everything through one set of eyes, you know, early on, there was a couple of things with all the different twist games that they were giving us. I thought they did a great job passing it off, working together. Obviously, there's stuff that we need to clean up to be expected with the youth of those guys and them making their first starts. But having Sam in there, getting everyone together, having Jack 
and his experience working together. Again, as we continue to work through this day in and day out, they're only going to continue to get better and live our be the alpha mindset and improve and compete day in and day out. And I'm excited to see that growth and excited to work with them. I know Coach OB will have them ready and excited for the future. Well, thank you, Alan. Uh, let's move on and uh, welcome in uh, Tim Booth from the Associated Press. Tim, do you have any questions here for Coach? How about Jack Bernie from TV2? Jack, thanks for staying up with us. Coach, um, I thought one of the positives from today's game was the special teams. A couple big returns there, one from Coop, one from Garcia to set up that first touchdown. And also that big play, forcing that fumble and recovering that fumble there. Just talk about what that unit did well tonight. Yeah, I thought that phase of the game, again, had those splash plays, those moments of greatness that you mentioned. Um, you know, we just got to be consistent throughout, right? If Cav's going to be that big play return guy, then the next one he's got to do the little things the right way and field that next ball clean. So he can have the opportunity to do that so that we can be on time, be in sequence, have the proper spacing on the return. And then we can't have the foolish penalty at the end, right, to where we, we get the uh, the mortar kick or the sky adjust and, you know, we, we handle that. But then we have a personal battle that ripples out and, you know, one kid, so it has a late hit. So then it puts our defense in a compromising spot where they're going to start the ball from the from the 45 yard line, which leads, I believe, to a touchdown on that drive. You know, so again, we got to take care of one another. We got to play complimentary football. Um, and, and the special teams understands that they, they got to be a strength of what we're going to do because it all ties together so that we can win that field position game, the quote unquote hidden yardage. And, and we'll continue to grow and improve and be more consistent and not just occasionally great there the way that we were tonight. I was really pleased with glass and the operation of our kicking mechanics. You know, uh, the one that Josh pinned down was awesome. And then Glass, you know, has done tremendous work in the offseason, and the ball's really popping off his foot. And then one more for me, Coach. Uh, I thought the receiving unit looked pretty good tonight, um, creating separation. Also, Cephas had a couple nice runs after catch. Just let's talk about Cephas, Walker, all those guys, what they're able to do well against a pretty good defense. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're one of the strengths, you know, of our offense. And we knew that there was going to be some new pieces up front, but we knew that, Obviously, with Colin making his first start, there were some guys that were around them, right, with the, the tailbacks, with Coop and BB, who I thought ran exceptionally hard all night long. And then you alluded to with Tez and Cephas on the edge, you know, generating some some big plays and some run-after-catch ability. You know, those are things that they've shown throughout the, the spring practice phases and, and obviously training camp as well to where, you know, now they're, they're becoming playmakers with the ball in their hands after the catches. And to be able to do that when they're playing up, you know, is, is exceptional to see. We got some challenges that lie ahead, right? To so where they're going to be challenged again because they are some of our difference makers. Again, we got to welcome that, we got to embrace that, and we got to get better because of it. Thank you, Jack. And let's go over to Jacob Hansen with uh, Kent Stater. Jacob, do you have any questions here for Coach tonight? Yeah. Um. Hey, Coach. Um. One thing I noticed was um towards the end of the sec or the end of the half, um, you saw the defense making some plays, um, forcing fumbles. There's like three or four players, you had some fumbles. What can you say about your uh, defense of um, ability to, you know, not give up, play physical, force fumbles, even though they weren't recovered, you know, ability to force fumbles and play physical. What can you say about that? Yeah, I mean, I, like we've talked about before, the the characteristics and traits of elite defense, first and foremost, starts with relentless effort and, and the relentless ability to compete no matter what the situation is. And I thought our defense did that throughout the whole course of the game, you know, and I couldn't be prouder of the guys that were in the game for that goal line stand you know, to, to where they didn't lay down, they, they didn't lay over and, and, and they bowed up and they got that stop, which was phenomenal. Um, so as long as we play with relentless effort, you know, we're gaps on with what we're doing and we leverage the football. Those are traits of elite defense. We can do those things. Those are things that we can control that our kids know about, that they believe in. And, um, you know, so I'm excited again for their growth and their improvement as we continue to work and come together with the new scheme and new structure of what we're doing with the new staff on that side of the ball um, and, and excited for where we're going to go as we continue to work through all of this together. And then one more, you know, you talk about Cephas' performance. What's it like having a player like that where, you know, no matter the spotlight, no matter primetime game where it's at, a guy that can come out, play like that, put up those numbers, what's it like to have a guy like that? I mean, it's a testament to his hard work as a, as a player. It's a testament to Coach Middleton's ability to coach and develop his players to where we know that regardless of the setting, right, there's the, the big-time players that we have that are some of our best guys that are going to perform. Right. So whether it's whether it's Cephas, whether it's Coop, whether it's Chris Leach and the role that we ask him to make, whether it's Sam Allen. Right. Like those are our best players. And those guys know that those are guys that we're building the game plan around. 
So there, there's this only illusion of choice if you're not in our family, right, to where they – where everyone thinks like there's this choice of whether they can show up or not, and, and there isn't. That those guys know that we're counting on them, that the family's counting on them, and they they show up and they perform day in and day out when the family needs them, which is awesome, right? That, that's, that's what it's all about. That's what a true family member is. Hey, I got you no matter what. No matter what I'm going through, no matter what the situation is, I got you, and whatever the family needs, I'm going to take care of you, and Slim is one of those guys. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. Let's open it up for another round of questioning. Any last thoughts or questions for Coach? All right, guys. We once again thank you for making it a late night with us. We'll see you on Monday for our weekly press conference, and then again next Saturday night after Oklahoma. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Go Flashes.